This, I think we are starting to have a good understanding of solving equations, right? Solving equations is something that y'all are pretty familiar with, but how much did we freak out when we got to 2D and 3A? Say it again. You still know 3A? Okay, well, let's talk about it a little bit. You, you can get to it pretty easily if you know how to do um, 2D. But, It's very similar. It's not quite the same. Notice, if we are looking at 2D, what 2D is saying, okay, we have this equation, 3.6C plus 7.5T is equal to 21,600. We know T number of trucks, which that's odd, I know, but that's a variable. What we're trying to figure out is how many cars are there based on that number of trucks. All right, so how are we gonna figure that out? What's the first step? We all have been through this. Subtract how much? Okay. And that's going to create a zero. You got to do it to both sides. Couple of quick pointers that I want to point that I want to show you is because if this is where a hand flows are getting lost, you might want to make this note. If I want the C, right, what is the first operation happening to the C? It's being what? It's currently being multiplied by 3.6, right? After you multiply 3.6 times the C, what are you doing? Repeated multiplication. You're repeatedly adding a 7.5 T number of times, or just adding 7.5 T, right? So the last thing that was being done to that variable C, see how that's the first thing we undid? That is the process of solving an equation. If you can identify what is happening to the variable first, that's the last thing that you're going to handle. Whatever's happening last is the first thing you're going to take care of because now I can just subtract and get zero. Right? I would make that note to myself that is whatever operation is happening last to the variable of interest, that is the first thing you should undo. Do I need to write that down, or we're just like, no, Mr. Kenny, I'll do it. Write that down. The last operation um, applied to the variable of interest is the first one undone. We're multiplying C by 3.6. Then we're adding that 7.5T. So I need to subtract 7.5T first. Okay? Okay? Have I figured out how many cars it is yet? No? What do I need to do? 3.6. Divide by the 3.6. Right, we're using our inverses coupled with what properties? Properties of equality. So this means that the original equation that we started with and this equation are what? This equation and the one we started with are what? Equivalent. Do they look different? Heck yeah. But are these telling the same story? Yes. The point of this is, notice on A, B, and C how you had to substitute into this equation and go through all the work of solving every single time, right? Would you have to solve here or could you just simplify? You just simplify, right? That work is a lot less. In fact, if you know C equals all of this stuff, then I can substitute in for T and just plug it into a calculator. That's the beauty of solving for one single variable. If I know what that variable is equal to, then I substitute the known information in, and I can just simplify. So when we had 3a, now what we 
we're saying is we know how many cars, we want to figure out how many trucks, right? Kyla, what's the first operation happening to the number of trucks? Oh, what's with the number, the T, the trucks? What's right next to it? 7.5, and then what's happening between the 7.5 and the T? So what's the first thing happening to the number of trucks? By, right? Do we see how that's the first operation happening to the number of trucks? Now, this is the one tricky part. Don't forget this is a plus. It's an understood positive here. So after we multiply 7.5 times the number of trucks, what's happening to that expression? The only other thing there is repeatedly adding that 3.6, C number of times, we're just adding 3.6 C. Right? So what is the first thing I need to undo? Three point six C, right? Seven point five is being multiplied by T, then I'm adding three point six C, so I just need to subtract three point six C. Again, what's three point six C minus three point six C? That's a zero. 7.5t is equal to 21,600 minus 3.6c. I'm so close to knowing the number of trucks. What's the last step? Say again. Okay, I thought you said something else. Yeah, I heard someone over here saying as well, divide by 7.5. That's the inverse of multiplication. And again, the beauty is, what's 7.5 divided by 7.5? That's a 1. So I'm left with one truck or 1t, the number of trucks, is equal to 21,600 minus 3.6c divided by 7.5. In this case, would you have to solve for the number of trucks every time? No. no. That is the beauty of solving for an end of, uh, a single variable. Yeah, that equation looks different than this top one. It looks different than this one over here. But because we use properties of equality, all three of these equations are what? Equivalent, right? They are equivalent. They look different, but they're effectively the same. Yet now, one will be easier than another in order to figure out the question of interest or the variable of interest. This matters, okay? Uh, Really quick note before we start work on this next part, uh, just based on where we are, since today's only Tuesday, we will not have time to get to lesson 20 for the homework to be due on Thursday. Okay? So just lessons 8 and 9 homework will be due on Thursday. The lesson 20 homework will be due on uh, Monday. Why do you say dang like that? Should I do it? What is that thing right there? Well, this will give you a chance to ask questions, right? To make sure you've done it right. And two, that's just less work for you to do later, right? Yeah. What were you saying, Lexi? Happy to do that. Okay. Sorry if I made something confusing. That's my bad. Okay, so from what I'm seeing, um, actually, what was 3B? I didn't even look at that. Use your equation in a calculator or a computer to find the number of trucks that can be shipped if the cargo already has 1,000 cars. What if the cargo already has 4,250? So what would I need to do here if there's 1,000 cars? So it's 2, so 21,600 minus 3.6 times 1,000 divided by 7.5. And legitimately, again, you could just use a calculator for all of this. That would be 3600. Zero, zero. Let me ask you this. Is that easier than having to go through all the steps of solving that equation every single time? So especially if you have multiple uh, numbers of cars, um, you just need to divide that. But if you have multiple numbers of cars and you're trying to figure out the number of trucks, you want T equals because that will make your life easier. Instead of having to do it every single time like you had to do for number two. Does that make sense? 
It's okay to say no, ask questions if not. Does it make sense? What doesn't make sense? Huh? None of it? When you say none of it, like you don't know how to solve this equation? So do you, you don't understand why we want this? No, I don't understand. You don't understand which one? I don't understand. Well, B just says use your equation, right? This equation. And a calculator or a computer to find the number of trucks that can be shipped if the cargo already has 1,000 cars. So you plug in 1,000 cars? So I plugged in 1,000 cars for C. Right? It is. 3.6C plus 7.5T is equal to 21,600. But isn't this equation that you created right here equivalent? Right? If you substitute that 1,000 in here, you can still solve that equation. But what's going to be easier? Solving that equation or just substituting and simplifying? That's the whole point. And so I'm glad you asked that question. Be, please ask the questions, right? Because I, I apparently was not clear about that. The whole point is that I know the number of cars. That's my input. It's my independent variable. I want to get the number of trucks. It's going to be way easier to have this equation substitute and simplify rather than have to substitute and solve again. Does that clarify it for everybody? Shannon, you can go with that now? Okay. Ask those questions. I'm more than happy to answer them. Sorry, Huh? 2,400. 2,400, thank you, sir. So the number of trucks is 2,400. And also, I will point this out, it's good to keep in mind and put your uh, context in there. So T equals 2,400 trucks, right, on the cargo ship, right? The, the context matters. And I apologize for not doing that before, but take that extra second, right? Go One, show your work. I think that's one of the things that's getting us... Um, messed up. If you had shown your work every single time on A, B, and C for number two, that would have helped you on D for number two, right? Okay? Um, so that's something to be aware of. And then T equals 2,400 trucks on the cargo ship. Alright, really quickly. Um, we are running out of time and we are behind for sure. So I'm going to ask you to do one thing tonight off of this. Alright? So, remember, lessons 8 and 9 are the only things due on Thursday. So, I'm going to ask you to do this, and I'm going to check tomorrow. You just have to have attempted it. You don't have to have it right, but I need you to attempt this number one, right? The Department of Streets of a City has a budget of $1,962,800 for resurfacing roads and hiring additional workers this year. Guys, I'm about to make some quick notes that might help you with this. I would probably keep my stuff out. Uh, so the cost of resurfacing a mile of two-lane road is estimated $84,000. The average starting salary of a worker in the department is $36,000 a year. And so it asks us to write an equation that represents the relationship between the miles of two-lane roads the department could resurface, M, and the number of new workers it could hire, P, if it spends the entire budget. So if we do one mile of two-lane road, how much money are they going to spend? How much? 84000 If they do a second mile, how much are they going to spend? 84000 If they do a third mile, they're going to spend how much? So what are we repeatedly doing with that 84000 And that's huge to pay attention to. Then when we look at the number of new workers, how much is one new worker going to cost? 36000 and a second worker would cost 36000 And a third worker would cost 36000 So we're going to repeatedly add. That's an important thing to notice. We just don't know how many miles it is. We don't know how many workers it is. We just know we can spend that total amount of money. Say again? Yeah. All right. So we'll get to lesson 20 tomorrow. Is not quite yet. So in closing, nope. uh, we'll get into one variable inequalities tomorrow, not reviewing them. We'll finish the two variable equations. And don't forget lesson 20.
will not be due on Thursday. That's what will be due on Monday. Or yeah, the last thing to be due will be due on Monday. Have a great rest of your day. Please stop stressing. Make sure you're doing your best to learn. Say again. Yes. If you did not turn in the homework in yesterday and you want to turn it in, please turn in six and seven. Make sure you are doing your best to learn and to grow. If you do that, you will be good in my class. You haven't done it in seven yet? Okay. If you can get it to me today, maybe after enrichment, you can still.